I am Weston. I love talking about the Jets. And I'm here to talk about week five, where the Jets absolutely blow out the Miami Dolphins 40-17. to And I don't really know what to tell you. Man, the Jets scored 40 points. I mean, that's wild, right? The Jets of all teams. Who'd have thought? So I will say, I'm sorry for my tardiness. This is being recorded after 10 p.m. And I don't even know when it's going to be uploaded, but... So I do apologize for that uh, busy day. So let's not waste any time. Let's just get into this. The Jets get on the board first. Sauce Gardner forces a safety. Jets get a pair out of it. Not too bad there. Sauce Gardner had a fantastic day. A couple of nice pass breakups. A garbage P.I. call that I despised on him. But he also got his first career pick. Sauce Gardner had a great game. Sauce Gardner has been amazing since coming to the Jets. I didn't love the pick on draft night. Boy, oh boy, have I had to eat crow. He looks like not just the best corner on this Jets team, not just the best corner best corner on this Jets team in the past few years. He's one of the top in the league. He's looked amazing through five games. And hey, still in the first quarter, the Jets would get a field goal. They'd make it a 5-0 game, which is a strange score. And then in the second, Brees Hall with a 79-yard rush to let Michael Carter fall three feet forward and get a touchdown, which was the Brees Hall doing all the work for Michael Carter to just fall forward to get touchdowns today was one of my favorite narratives. In the second quarter, the Dolphins would also get a rushing touchdown of their own. The Jets would get another rushing touchdown. This one was by Zach Wilson, who in two games has a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, and a receiving touchdown for the hat trick, even though it took two games and we're not even talking about hockey, but hat trick. And Durham Smith would score a touchdown. Allegedly. Look, I, I understand that it's perfectly legal to take a snap like that. I understand that the direct snap is a thing. I just, man, I don't love how animated the quarterback was allowed to be. And you might call me a whiny Jets fan. And whining about this in a game that we won by 23 is nitpicking. But man, that was an annoying touchdown and I was just kind of losing my mind. They're like, how can he be that animated in a conversation? That is like Pollock levels of animated. And there was just nothing called. And then in the third quarter, Jason Sanders kicks a 46-yarder, and all of a sudden, the Dolphins are within a score. Which gave way to the Jets absolutely running rampant in the fourth quarter. Another huge Brees Hall play would set up for Michael Carter to just fall forward a yard to get a touchdown. That would make it a 26-17 Jets lead. Brees Hall actually got to finish one of his... That's super cool for him. He'd get a five-yard touchdown rush, and all of a sudden the Jets are up 33-17. to It's feeling out of reach. And then Braxton Berrios, 15-yard beautiful reverse, gets hit pretty hard, but he gets up. He's fine. And the Jets drop 40. So to go through quite a few performances, we'll start with the defense. Sauce Gardner was absolutely fantastic. Had his first interception, had the forced safety. Sauce is him. Himothy. I mean, we have been looking for a replacement for Darrell Rivas since 2016. We have found him. And boy, oh boy, has he just showed out immediately this season. There has been no lead up for it, which you would expect playing such an important position on defense, which is hard to adjust to in the NFL for some positions and for some players. And no, he's hit the ground running. DJ Reed and Michael Carter II also both had great games. They looked solid. The entire safety corner the secondary for the Jets has looked really, really solid this year, which is amazing to see. And the defensive line finally feasted. Carl Lawson, sack, forced fumble, seven QB hits. Amazing. John Franklin Myers, half a sack, but this is the big one, five QB hits. And then you had Quincy or Quinnen Williams with half a sack. The fumble recovery that helped set up the Jets' final touchdown. Also, that amazing stiff arm on Tariq Hill, which was just, oh, put that on a loop in my mind forever. And he also had a pair of QB hits. Like, the defensive line finally got to eat today, and it was very fun to see, you know, when they could actually put pressure on you. And when the Jets would actually be, when they'd actually bring a blitz, they would just chew through offensive lines. Here's a wild concept going forward. Blitz more. I'm going to talk a little bit about play calling in a moment, but we'll get there when we get there. Offensively, Brees Hall coming out party. Almost 200 total yards, had a touchdown, could have had three very, very easily. Michael Carter having 21 yards and a pair of touchdowns was amazing and hilarious to me. Not if you're Brees Hall. You probably feel a little bit irritated, but 
if you're Michael Carter, that is a fun day. Braxton Berrios had the nice reverse. Zach Wilson had the rushing touchdown. Uh, receiving game, Corey Davis, all reliable. Pair of receptions, 38 yards. Breeze Hall, two receptions for 100. Are you joking me? Uh, one complaint that I will have for the receiving game, Garrett Wilson has just not been targeted or been utilized as much as I would like since Zach has come back. He's clearly trying to force the ball a little bit more towards Elijah Moore, and I get that there's a connection there, but man, oh man, Garrett Wilson is uber talented, and you've got to make him the number one option in this offense. I like Elijah Moore a lot, and he's going to be an elite number two, but Garrett Wilson's one. And to talk about the quarterback with Zach Wilson, he was fine. And I'm very excited to say that he was fine. He wasn't great. 14 to 21, 210 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, rushing, rushed for a touchdown. Zach Wilson was fine. And I'm very happy to say that because he didn't make any mistakes. He had one bad sack where you'd like him to get rid of the ball, but he didn't turn the ball over. He wasn't forcing it. He was taking what they were giving him and what they were giving him were check down, some big chunks of yardage here and there. Zach Wilson didn't make mistakes today. And that's all you can want from a young quarterback. The big games, the three, the four touchdown games, that's going to come once he starts to get more comfortable with the offense as the season progresses. But the fact that the Jets were able to drop 40 and Zach Wilson had a pretty suspect day because there were five touchdowns on the ground, I am all for that. That's fantastic. Before I get on to the very end of this, I want to say the play calling in this game was bad. Uh, there were quite a few bad play calls. I do not understand this obsession of run up the middle, run to the right, and then force a long pass from Zach Wilson. I hate that drive plan. Please change that going forward. I That was just bad. Whenever we'd throw on first down, we'd get like 15 yards, and then we wouldn't throw on first down for a while. Play calling got a lot better as we progressed. Same with the defense. Stop with this dumb ass rotation and just put your best defenders out there for most of the snaps. This is not complicated. This is what everyone does. You're trying to money ball it. You don't need to. You have three bona fide great players on the defensive line in Quinn and Williams, in John Franklin Myers, and in Carl Lawson, plus budding stars like Jermaine Johnson, who God, I hope, is not injured for very long. Also, Bryce Huff, who's looked great for the whole three snaps he's played this entire season. Like, put your best players on the line and let them be monsters. That's all we're asking for you. And the final thing that I want to talk about for the Jets today is overcoming mistakes. Because I said that Zach Wilson didn't make mistakes, and I don't really think he did. But there was the bad sack. There was the awful play call on a fourth and two that ran five receivers wide, and no one, none of them were going for a check down, which was one of the dumbest play calls I've ever seen. The Jets made a couple of mistakes today, and they still won. Up till now, for the past three or four or even five years, the New York Jets, in wins, have had to play nearly perfect football. When they're playing good teams, when they're playing other bottom feeders, yeah, it's been an ugly slugfest. But when they're playing good teams, the Miami Dolphins, sure, they were down to their third-string quarterback. That's not lost on me that Skylar Thompson was their quarterback for today. They still have a great offense, right? Tariq Hill, Jalen Wall are still elite, amazing receivers, and anyone throwing to them has a chance, right? The defense is solid enough. Granted, the Chets torched them today, but the defense has its ups and downs. It has its pros. I really like the defensive line on the Dolphins, right? The Dolphins are a good team. The New York Jets made some mistakes today both offensively and defensively, and overcame them. For the past few years, the Jets, I've already said it, they've had to play perfect football against good teams to win. And I would equate it to a boxer who just, if they get touched anywhere in a fight, doesn't matter if it's to the shoulder, doesn't matter if it's to the chest, doesn't matter anywhere, knockout. It's over. You can't let them touch you. The Jets today got hit a few times. They made some mistakes. And they over came them. That's huge for this team to make mistakes and have them not haunt you for the rest of the game. The fourth and two, the sack, these mistakes that you're like, uh, that could be game changing. And they didn't. And they didn't. It's progress. Folks, I said going into the season, I wanted to have hope. I wanted to see things that inspired positivity. I wanted to see competitive games. I wanted to see close games. This wasn't a close game. It actually turned into a bit of a blowout for the New York Jets. I said I wanted to, when the month became November or December, see the Chiron pop up with the playoff picture and have the Jets over in the slot that says in the hunt. 
and they're not there. Because at this moment in time, it's only five weeks, I understand that, the Jets actually have a playoff spot. The season ender right now, the New York Jets will be the fifth seed in the AFC. Which is exciting to say. We're above 500 for the first time since 2017. And I say this, I said it after week one, even in a loss. I said it after week two. I said it after week four last week. It feels different. This doesn't feel like the same old Jets anymore. And so I go into week six feeling confident in this team, excited to see what they can do against Green Bay, who went over to London and lost to the Giants. Why not us? Why not go 3-0 and on the road to start the season? Why not? So I'll be here next week to talk about that. But until then, I'll see you with the Astros and Rangers videos because Rangers hockey starts on Tuesday. How about that? But that's all I have to say for the night. So thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Jets!